In this video, we're breaking down intentionally dropped balls in a rule that is designed to prevent the defense from turning an undeserved double play. After covering the definition, we'll then tackle some complex case plays that will help round out your knowledge of the rules. And if you want to see how well you can do on the case plays before reviewing them with me at the end of the video, there's a quiz linked in the description. Hey everyone, Patrick Farber from GHSA Baseball, Umpire Development, and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires develop their knowledge and skills. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you're looking for a packaged course for new umpires, either for yourself or for your association, you can learn more by visiting our website, umpireclassroom.com. To start, we need to understand the definition of an intentionally dropped ball and the intent of the rule. Rule 5-1-1J. The ball becomes dead immediately when an infielder intentionally drops a fair fly, fair line drive, or fair bunt in flight with at least first base occupied and with less than two outs. Exception infield fly rule. The rule continues briefly in 8-4-1C. The ball is dead and the runner or runners shall return to their respective bases. In this situation, the batter is not out if the infielder permits the fair fly, fair line drive, or fair bunt in flight to drop untouched to the ground, except when the infield fly rule applies. So there was a lot of reference to the infield fly rule, and that's because both of these rules are designed to prevent the defense from turning an undeserved double play. This is why both rules require at least one runner on base and that there always be less than two outs. Now to cover the differences between the two, let's touch on the definition of an infield fly. Rule 2-19. An infield fly is a fair fly, not including a line drive nor an attempted bunt, which can be caught by an infielder with ordinary effort, and provided the hit is made before two are out and at a time when first and second bases, or all bases, are occupied. The first major difference is that the intentional drop rule can apply to any type of ball in flight, while the infield fly only applies to fly balls and doesn't apply to line drives or bunts. The second difference is an infield fly requires first and second, or first, second, and third bases to be occupied, while an intentional drop only requires that first base be occupied. The third key difference is how a ball becomes one or the other. A fly ball in an infield fly situation becomes an infield fly if it could be caught by an infielder with ordinary effort, regardless of if it is touched. For an intentional drop, by rule, a batted ball in flight can only become an intentional drop if it is physically touched and is intentionally uncaught by an infielder. So this play here would qualify as an intentionally dropped ball, and this one here would not. Finally, the fourth difference is that a batted ball ruled to be an infield fly by rule cannot be intentionally dropped. The reason for this is that once ruled an infield fly, runners should know that they can safely return to their bases and won't need to advance, even if uncaught. For this reason, the possibility of a cheap double play is removed. So now that we've reviewed intentionally dropped balls, let's review this week's case plays. Case play number one. R1, one out. B2 hits a line drive to F4. The infielder intentionally drops the catch. Is this A, this is an immediate dead ball, B2 is out, R1 returned to first. B, this is an immediate dead ball, B2 is awarded first, R1 is awarded second. C, this is a delayed dead ball, if both runners advance safely, the intentional drop is ignored. D, this is a delayed dead ball. After the play, the offensive coach can take the result of the play or a one base award for each runner. The correct answer here is A, this is an intentionally dropped ball. For an intentionally dropped ball, it's always gonna be an immediate dead ball. The batter's gonna be out and all runners on base return back to their position at the time of the pitch. Case play number two, R1, R2, one out. B3 hits a pop-up to F4, which can be caught with ordinary effort. F4 intentionally drops the catch. Is this A, this is an infield fly. B, this is an intentionally dropped ball. C, this is an infield fly and an intentionally dropped ball. D, this is neither and the ball remains live and in play. The correct answer here is A, this is an infield fly. Remember that the intentional drop rule specifically says that it can't be intentionally dropped if it's an infield fly. In this scenario, the requirements for an infield fly are met so it's gonna be an infield fly and not an intentionally dropped ball. Case play number three, R1, R2, two out. B3 hits a pop-up to F4, which can be caught with ordinary effort. F4 intentionally drops the catch. Is this A, this is an infield fly? B, this is an intentionally dropped ball? C, this is an infield fly and an intentionally dropped ball? 
D, this is neither, and the ball remains live and in play. The correct answer here is D. This is not an intentionally dropped ball, and it's also not an infield fly. Because there are two outs, there's no risk of a double play, so neither of those rules can apply. Case play number four. R1, R2, one out. B3 hits a line drive to F4, which can be caught with ordinary effort. F4 intentionally drops the catch. Is this A, this is an infield fly? B, this is an intentionally dropped ball? C, this is an infield fly and an intentionally dropped ball? D, this is neither and the ball remains live and in play. The correct answer here is B, this is an intentionally dropped ball. Yes, it does start in a scenario where we could have an infield fly, but an infield fly has to be a fly ball or a pop-up, and this is a line drive. A line drive can, however, be an intentionally dropped ball, which is what we have here, so we'll go with an intentionally dropped ball. Case play number five, R1, R2, one out. B3 bunts a ball high into the air that F1 can catch with ordinary effort. F1 intentionally drops the catch. Is this A, this is an infield fly? B, this is an intentionally dropped ball? C, this is an infield fly and an intentionally dropped ball. D, this is neither and the ball remains live and in play. The correct answer here is B, this is an intentionally dropped ball. Just like the play previously, an infield fly cannot be a line drive and it also cannot be a bunt. However, for an intentionally dropped ball, any ball in flight, including a line drive or a bunt, could qualify for that rule and that's what we're going to enforce. Case play number six, R2, R1, one out. B3 hits a high fly to second base, which could have been caught by F4 with ordinary effort. Neither umpire declares infield fly. F4 intentionally drops the ball. He then picks it up and throws to F5, who tags R2, who is attempting to reach third base. Is this A, R2 is returned to second, R1 is returned to first, B3 is out. B, R2 is awarded third, R1 is awarded second, B3 is awarded first. C, R2 is returned to second, R1 is out, B3 is awarded first. D, R2 is out, B3 is out, the inning is over. The correct answer here is D. This is an infield fly that's gonna have the batter being out and then R2 was able to advance at their own risk. And of course, they're gonna be out because they were tagged out before reaching any base. Now, what you need to take away from this is first, that an infield fly cannot be an intentionally dropped ball. And second, it's an infield flyer regardless of whether or not the umpires accurately identify it in a reasonable amount of time. So long as the ball was an infield fly, it's an infield fly. We're going to go with that rule, and it can't be an intentionally dropped ball. Case play number seven. Is this an intentionally dropped ball? Rosario goes a weak little pop-up, and Rosario's got to hustle back, and they let the ball drop, and now... They the correct answer here is no. This is not an intentionally dropped ball. The rule is specific in saying that the ball has to be touched in flight for it to be an intentionally dropped ball. In this scenario, the defense just lets the ball fall untouched, which means it can't qualify for that rule and the ball is going to be live and in play. Case play number eight. Is this an intentionally dropped ball? Breaking ball, soft line drive, dropped by... Now they'll get one. The correct answer here is no. This is not an intentionally dropped ball. The fielder intended to catch the ball and he didn't, but there was no intent to touch it and not catch it. So in this scenario, the ball's gonna be live and in play. So there you have it, our review of intentionally dropped balls in NFHS baseball. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our website at umpireclassroom.com. As always, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the field.